بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. Continuing on in the tenth point in Shara Sunnah, where Imam Baba Hari said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, uh, May Allah have mercy upon you. Know that a servant's Islam is not complete until he follows, attests to, and submits to the truth. So anyone who claims that there remains anything from Islam not sufficiently explained by the companions of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Radiallahu Ta'ala Majma'een has falsely accused them, has split from them, and spoken ill of them. He is an innovator, astray, and leading others astray, introducing into Islam that which is not from it. Ayyu al fillah as we were mentioning in the first explanation of the first part of that about the completeness of Islam and we mentioned some verses which show the importance of following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that is uh, the sunnah is Islam and Islam is a sunnah as Imam Baba Hari points out Rahimullah Ta'ala in the beginning of the treaties and that loving or, or uh, if a person wants to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they should follow the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبَكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غُفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ So there's two fuayid there, there's two benefits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, say, if you love Allah, then follow me, meaning follow the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah will love you and He will forgive you of your sins. And Allah is the most forgiving, most merciful. So here, the two important things that you can gain from this, that we gain from this ayat, is one, the importance of following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah as a means to gain the love of Allah. That's number one. We follow the sunnah and we gain the love of Allah. So if you truly love Allah, then you'll follow the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the first point. The second point that we get from this ayat is that if we want the forgiveness for our sins from Allah azza wa jalla, and all of us have sins as we mentioned, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make toba 70 times and in another narration 100 times a day. What about us? All the children of Adam make mistakes. And the best of those who make mistakes is those who repent. So we're in need of the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we want to gain the love of Allah, and if we want forgiveness from Allah, then we follow the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then we reach the part where Imam Baba Hari pointed out that if someone uh, claims that there is something from the religion which is uh, incomplete, then of course they're lying and they are an innovator. And the Prophet ﷺ said, nas qarni yulunum, yulunum. The best people is some people of my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. That's the leel to follow the salaf of this ummah. That the best of the generation is the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala majma'een. Then those who follow them, the tabi'een. Then who's the, those who follow them, the itba'a tabi'een. Those are the best. That's the best in Islam. Those are the best three generations. And that they're the best. They're the most knowledgeable in every aspect of the deen. And they're the best in every uh, janib. Min jawanib ad deen. You know, they're the best in manners. They're the best in... Uh, in practicing the sunnah. They're the best in understanding the sunnah. They're the best in tafsir. They're the best. So when we hear other people say, and this is another uh, point that I uh, recall hearing from Mr. Uh, Nu'man Ali Khan, may Allah guide us in him, where he said something like the tafsir. Uh, no, may Allah forgive me. I, I think it wasn't him, but it, maybe it was someone who was praising him, who was praising his tafsir, and was saying that that tafsir is so great, and this and this and this for the English-speaking audience, okay? And was mentioning that yes, the tafsir of the Salaf is great, but this modern, this tafsir, I think it was either him or it was the person praising him. Alakulihal, the point being is that you have many people in this day and age who claim that there are others who have a sabil or who have a way, who have a minhaj, who have a methodology in da'wah, who have a new tariqah, who have a better understanding. Some believe 
uh, you know, there, there's all kind of ideologies in bid'ah that is widespread within the community and outside the community of people who believe that they have something new that the Salaf didn't have, or they have a new way to apply Islam that the Salaf didn't do. And this is where we see Dr. Qadi go astray. One of the ways we see he goes, him go astray is when he refers to that, you know, the, salaf, the path of the Salaf, you know, that's fine and dandy, but the, uh, you know, we're in America, so, you know, we don't need to, uh, uh, you know, deal with those differences. You know, we, we, we have differences, and we have bigger problems, and we should ta'awin. And this is exactly the minhaj al akhwana muslimi, exactly, that we should uh, excuse one another, that we should ta'awin together, we should work together, and excuse one another for those areas in which we differ. That is the qa'ida that Hassan al-Binna laid down as the foundation of Akhwan al-Muslimin. And that is one of the reasons why you hear Salafi scholars speak about Akhwan al-Muslimin so harshly and so intensely with fervor because that is their principle. Their principle is a principle which uh, negates those qa'id that the Salaf laid down. It totally goes against it. There's just no compatibility. There's no way you can reconcile. That is ikhtilaf tadad, as we mentioned. That's the different, difference where they're just totally opposing opposites. The Salaf, you know, kathrata uh, narrations, there's so many narrations uh, where they spoke about Ahl Bidah and not sitting with Ahl Bidah, not eating with Ahl Bidah. And if the person is a da'i to, to Bidah, what, what is his... Uh, state compared to the general person from Ahl Bidah. What if a person has Bidah Mukaffara, you know, and, and the Murtid, and you know, can you pray behind him? When, when uh, you shouldn't pray behind someone, and when you can pray behind someone. All of those Masail, they all come from how to deal with Ahl Bidah. And so, uh, Ahl Sunnah, from the Bidaya, Min Bidaya to Lamur, Min Sahaba, Wutabi'een, Wutabi'een, and those who follow them in Isan Bilayom Adin, they all laid down that foundation for us to follow. But then we have people who come today who bring something new and it's a type, it's a way of making ibtal, ibtal of those kawaii of the salaf, of falsifying those kawaii of the salaf by coming with new kawaii. And the point B is they deceive the masses. The masses of Muslims, because when you go to a gathering that those individuals are giving speeches, of course you're going to have hundreds, possibly a couple thousand maybe. You know, this, this is the, the case where you find with a lot of the Hezbeen that they have a lot of followers and many people in numbers because they don't upset anybody generally. They only upset Ahl Sunnah generally. But they don't upset the masses. You know, it's okay, sister, you're not wearing hijab. Sit with the brothers and, you know, we'll mix, we'll just do, do our thing. You know, I'm not going to speak about anything. We're not even going to speak about sins. We don't even really want to upset you. You know, this is the type of dawah that you see. It's crowd gathering. Crowd gathering dawah. When the minhaj al anbiya is a very thin, it's a very thin and, and fine line. And it's a narrow path. And it's based on kitab wa sunnah. And the understanding of the salaf of this ummah. And it's not going to be a lot of numbers. This is just the, the reality. Mostly, most of the time, many of the anbiya, some of them didn't even have anyone who followed them. As the Prophet wasallam said in an authentic hadith. And then when he looked and he saw that there was a su'adun azim. He saw a massive crowd and he thought it was his ummah. But it said it was the followers of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Ayola ahabbati, the truth doesn't lie in a lot of numbers necessarily. The truth lies with the truth. It lies with kitab wa sunnah. And this is uh, the point. And some of the other important points here is that it's imperative that we realize the deen is complete and realize that there's no new manahij, there's no new methodologies, no new ways. The sharia, it came complete. Uh, it doesn't require ziyadah, it doesn't require an increase. Wala naqsan, nor a decrease. And this is because, why? Why do I say this? Qala Allah Ta'ala fi kitab al-kareem. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa radaytu lakum islam adina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem in Surah Al-Ma'idah, so, uh, uh, Ayah Thalatha, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This day I've perfected uh, for you your religion, and I've completed my favor upon you, 
and I and I am pleased with you, uh, pleased with Islam as your deen. Pleased with you, Islam, uh, Islam as your deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has completed the favor upon us, the ni'mah, which is Islam. And he uh, has completed uh, Islam, the sharia, he's completed it. And it doesn't require any increase or taking away from it. It's already complete. And the Prophet ﷺ said, تَرَكْتُكُمْ عَلَى بَيْضَى لَيْلَهَا كَالنَّهَارِهَا وَلَا يُزِيغَ عَنْهَا بَعْدَ إِلَّا هَالَكْ The Prophet ﷺ said, I left you on, to, uh, on, on that which is clear. It's night, it's like it's day. And no one will go astray from it except the one who is destroyed. And he said, وَمَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ فَسِيرَا اخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِمَا عَرَفْتُمْ مِنْ سُنَّتِي وَسُنَّةَ الْخُلَفَاءِ the Prophet ﷺ said, And whoever lives uh, after me is going to see many differences. Then he gave the prescription, فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي Then it's upon you my sunnah. And that, uh, that, that, you, that you know from my sunnah. مِنْ سُنَّتِي وَسُنَّةَ الْخُلَفَاءِ And the rightly guided and the khalifat. Abu Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali radiyallahu ta'ala majma'een. That's the asal right there. That's the asal of our deen. The foundation kitab wa sunnah. The kitab, kitab Allah, wa sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the madhab of the salaf of this ummah. That's dalil right there. Those are a couple of dalil that show us, the couple of evidences which show us that our path is the path of the Sahaba. They formed the Sabila Mu'mineen as we said in the prior lessons. The Prophet ﷺ said, the best people is my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. The Prophet ﷺ said, It's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifat. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ said, the Prophet ﷺ said about the same sect, those who are upon my sunnah and that of my companions. Those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. And there's many ample evidence about following that sabil and that that is the path to Najah. And that those who desire other than that are going towards a path of destruction. Those people who think that they know the harms and the benefits better than the scholars of Ahl Sunnah they should be cautious because then they believe that they have a new way, that the way that's adaptable to their particular circumstances and, and uh, uh, their society. And we're not saying, we're not negating the fact that we need fiqh of our societies. That's not what we're negating. What we're negating is when you begin to try to replace the ulama of Ahl Sunnah who have more knowledge of the deen on how to deal with those issues. That you have to go to them with a proper description and a proper uh, uh, of, of the situation that you deal with. We need those major scholars to deal with these major issues that we deal in our society. If we want to know about whether we should get involved in politics or not, we need to go to the kibar ulama, not just even the salah, not even just ulama that we love that have a lot of knowledge but we really need to go to the major scholars those mountains of knowledge like the Hayat Kibar Ulama here in Saudi Arabia those, those ulama they have, Allah has favored them with that ilm wa fiqh wa basira and the experience and the hikmah we need to go back to them to know how to deal with these major messiah, these new issues that we deal with in our, in our country. We have new issues. We have new problems and, and things that we face and we're, we're going to continue to have more. But we don't want to go to people who, just students of knowledge. People who also, maybe Allah has favored them with something of knowledge, but well, Allah understand, you see with their fatawa and with the, the, the statements that they make, that they make ibtal, of the qawaid and principles of the salaf of this ummah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins and bless us with ikhlas, with the bad ala sunnah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.